In this video, we will take a look at this concept of marginal var. Think of marginal var to be a var related tool that along with other tools such as the incremental var and the component var will help you perform some kind of a drill down analysis of the overall portfolio's var. Okay? To understand marginal var, first of all, we acknowledge this fact that our overall portfolio is built up by combining a number of sub portfolios. Now, how you define each of these sub portfolios depends entirely on the context. A sub portfolio can be an asset class, for example, equities, fixed income, commodities, etc. A sub portfolio can be a division in the firm, for example, retail, lending, and borrowing, or for example, securities. A sub portfolio can be as granular as an, an individual transaction or an individual trade that your traders have done. Okay. Now, take note of this fact that for each of these sub portfolios, what is available to us is the dollar amount invested for that particular sub portfolio. Okay. Let's call that dollar amount invested to be the exposure. Okay. So we'll denote it as XI. I being the ith sub portfolio. Let's formally define marginal var now. Think of marginal value at risk or marginal var for the ith sub portfolio to be the first order partial sensitivity of the total or the overall portfolio var to the amount invested in the ith sub portfolio. We have called that amount xi. So if I were to, let's say, bump this XI by a tiny amount, leaving the Xs of the other sub portfolios unchanged and try and find out how my total VAR of the portfolio changes, then that sensitivity measure is what we are referring to as the marginal VAR of the ith sub portfolio. Mathematically speaking, therefore, for the ith sub portfolio, I can define the marginal VAR to be equal to the partial derivative of the overall var, the var of the overall portfolio to changes in the xi, okay, the amount invested in the ith sub portfolio. This partial derivative will be computed, therefore, assuming that the allocations to the other sub portfolios, I mean all sub portfolios except the ith one stay unchanged okay so graphically speaking therefore if i were to make a plot and this plot is of how the var of my portfolio changes as the x of the ith sub portfolio changes keeping the x of the other sub portfolios constant okay so if this is the graph that i get and let's say at the current moment my xi is somewhere here then the marginal var basically is the slope of the tangent at the current value of xi. Okay, So as the xi also changes, the marginal var keeps changing. So this is how you would graphically interpret the marginal var. Okay? Now let's move on to the computation of marginal var. First and foremost, we will try and do it using a very simple formula. I'm assuming as a starting point that my VAR of the overall portfolio is given by this very simple formula. It's the critical Z value that times the portfolio standard deviation that times the overall dollar value of the portfolio. Okay. So if this is my starting point, I can then, you know, employ the definition of marginal VAR let's say of the ith sub portfolio, I know it's the partial derivative of the var of the portfolio to xi. Okay, So this, if you were to do the math and not doing it here, yields a very simple expression and that is the marginal var of the ith portfolio is the beta of this ith sub portfolio that times the var of the portfolio expressed in percentage terms. Okay. Now, at this point, note this, that the marginal var is a dimensionless number. We have a dollar value in the numerator and a dollar value in the denominator. The two cancel and we get a dimensionless or a unitless number. 
that unitless behavior is also retained in this formula where we know that the beta and the percentage var of the overall portfolio they are both unitless okay now let's do this let's spend a quick minute in you know finding out how to compute this beta so the beta i we know this from capm is equal to the covariance between the return of the ith sub portfolio and the overall portfolio return that divided by the variance of the portfolio returns okay now at least we should know how to compute this beta for the two asset case because that's the testable case in the exam so if i have to find out the beta for the first sub portfolio when there are only two sub portfolios basically i have to do this it will be the covariance between r1 and the return of the overall portfolio which i can write down as w1 r1 plus w2 r2 okay so what is w1 w2 w1 is equal to the weight for the first sub portfolio that will be the dollar amount invested in the first sub portfolio divided by the total dollar amount for which we are using vp okay similarly w2 will be x2 that divided by vp and then i need to divide this whole thing by sigma p squared now what i can do is i can use the properties of covariance and i can expand this out to be equal to w1 covariance between r1 and r1 which i know is the variance of r1 and that i know let's say it's sigma 1 squared plus w2 covariance between r1 and r2 so it will be w2 sigma 1 2 so this i know is basically rho 1 2 the correlation between the two sub portfolios that times sigma 1 that times sigma 2 okay I'll divide this whole thing by sigma p squared. So this is how I would write down the expression for beta 1. Similarly, you can write down the expression for beta 2. Okay. So this is how I will compute the marginal var for you know any given sub portfolio using a very simple formula. You can also compute the marginal var using a more numerical approach. Now, understanding this fact that the marginal var of the ith sub portfolio is basically a partial derivative okay i can compute this partial derivative numerically by let's say starting at the current exposure for the ith sub portfolio and let's say bumping it to xi plus delta xi okay so i'm bumping it by a tiny amount delta xi when I do this, then I'll note what my initial VAR portfolio was. Let's say it was this much and I'll note what it becomes after I do this shift. Please note that I am only changing the exposure or the amount invested for the ith sub portfolio. The exposures for all other sub portfolios are held constant. Okay. Let's say my new VAR of my portfolio is the original plus a change let's call it delta var p and therefore i can approximate my marginal var for the ith asset to be this change which i have experienced in my portfolio var divided by the change in the exposure to the ith sub portfolio that caused this much of var to change okay so this is like a more numerical way of computing the marginal var now let's finish off this video by taking a look at how to make use of this marginal var what is it useful for before we do that let's quickly answer this question can the marginal var be negative okay so by all means yes please note that marginal var can be negative it can happen that when you increase the allocation to any given asset that asset is a risky asset it can lead to the overall portfolio var going down okay and if that happens your marginal var will be negative now in terms of how to make use of the marginal var first and foremost i can use it as a means of linearly approximating how much my overall portfolio var changes 
when the allocation or the exposure to any given sub portfolio changes by a tiny amount okay so what i'm saying here is that i can approximate the change in my overall portfolio var by the marginal var of the ith sub portfolio that times the change in the exposure or the dollar amount invested in this sub portfolio okay so this will be like an a linear approximation it's like in the diagram which i drew it's like i am walking along the tangent that's the first way i can use marginal var the second way i can use marginal var and that's the more important one is to perform risk return trade offs so for example if i were to give you two assets both of them have the same expected return but the marginal var of first asset is positive marginal var of second asset is negative now if you were to perform a quick risk return trade off analysis it's the second asset which is more beneficial for you because when you add this second asset to your portfolio you will be increasing your return and you will be cutting down on the risk okay another application of reusing the marginal var to perform a risk return trade off is to figure out which sub portfolio i should select to cut down the exposure of so as to let's say reduce my overall portfolio var by the most amount okay so going by this formula for example i want to cut down the exposure by a certain pre stated amount so delta x is known to me and i want to pick that sub portfolio which brings about the biggest reduction in portfolio var okay so that sub portfolio as this formula clearly tells us should be that sub portfolio which has the highest marginal var okay so this video therefore was a quick look at this concept this var tool of marginal var